வணக்கம் ஐ ஆல்வேஸ் லைக் டு திங்க் ஆஃப் த பெனெட் ஃப்ராக்சர் டிஸ்லொகேஷன் ஆஸ் அ ஸ்வீட் அண்ட் சவர் ஃப்ராக்சர் ஸ்வீட் பிகாஸ் த ஃப்ராக்சர் வில் ஹீல் சம் ஹவு பட் சவர் பிகாஸ் த டிஸ்லொகேஷன் வில் கிவ் ஆல் த ப்ராப்ளம்ஸ் இட் மே பி கால்ட் ஸ்வீட் பிகாஸ் சிம்பிள் டெக்னிக்ஸ் யூசிங் கே வயர்ஸ் ஆர் இனஃப் டு மேனேஜ் திஸ் ஃப்ராக்சர் பட் சவர் பிகாஸ் இட் இன்வால்வ்ஸ் லாங்கர் பீரியட் ஆஃப் இமோபலைசேஷன் and it can be considered sweet because the treatment can be given quite easily but sour because there is a chance of developing arthritis even after excellent treatment whether sweet or sour it is an interesting fracture and we can get good results provided we follow the basic principles as will be elucidated in this video when we consider fractures of the base of the first metacarpal that is the thumb metacarpal we need to consider the fractures in relation to the important anterior oblique ligament it could be an intraarticular bennett fracture with a single fracture line or a rolando fracture with two fracture lines or a comminuted fracture with multiple fracture lines or an extraarticular fracture but in this video we are going to consider the bennett fracture dislocation only the term bennett fracture is after the irish surgeon edward h bennett who described this fracture in 1882 this fracture is characterized by certain specific features it involves a fracture and a dislocation involving the base of the thumb metacarpal and it is an intra articular two part fracture The mechanism of injury is an axial blow directed against the partially flexed metacarpal. Example, a fist hitting a wall or a face. The fracture usually starts at the ulnar side of the base of the thumb metacarpal. The volar fracture fragment remains attached to the trapezium by the volar anterior oblique ligament. The distal metacarpal fragment containing most of the articular surface is displaced proximally radially and dorsally by the pull of the abductor pollicis longus muscle which is inserted at the base of the first metacarpal the displaced metacarpal is also rotated in supination by the pull of the abductor pollicis longus the metacarpal head is displaced into the palm by the pull of the abductor pollicis muscle this typical deformity can be seen on the x ray we shall see a little about this important anterior oblique ligament of the thumb which has a superficial part and a deep part the deep part is known as the beak ligament it originates at the palmar tubercle of the trapezium and inserts on the volar beak of the base of the thumb metacarpal bone in a bennett fracture the usual presenting features are pain swelling and loss of function of the thumb X-rays are the most important investigations required for diagnosis of Bennett fracture dislocation. The usual X-ray views, PA, lateral and oblique views are important, but more important are three other views. The first is the true lateral view described by Billing and Geda and also by Bett. Here the hand is pronated 20 degrees, thumb positioned flat on the cassette and beam is angled 15 to 20 degrees from distal to proximal to coincide the plane of the joint secondly the true ap view or the roberts view is also important here the forearm is kept in maximal pronation the dorsum of the thumb resting on the cassette and the beam angled 15 degrees from distal to proximal finally after the diagnosis of the fracture has been made a traction radiograph can be taken by manually distracting the cmc joint to assess the effect of ligamentotaxis on the reduction but this is painful and is not advocated for all patients with a bennett fracture the bennett fracture can be classified according to the geda classification into three types type 1 where there is a fracture with a large single ulnar fragment and subluxation of the metacarpal base this type 1 can be seen in this sample x ray In type 2 there is an impaction fracture without subluxation of the thumb metacarpal as seen in this example 
in type 3 there is a fracture with a very small ulnar avulsion fragment in association with metacarpal dislocation. This can be seen in this example. When we consider the aims of management of a Bennett fracture, though anatomic articular restoration is important, more important is the reduction of the dislocation. And to achieve this, we have a few treatment options. The first is non-operative management or closed reduction and application of cast or splint. Operative methods of management would include closed reduction and percutaneous pinning or open reduction and internal fixation. Closed reduction or non-operative management would be indicated for very small avulsion fractures with relative joint stability and minimal subluxation of the carpometacarpal joint with less than 1 mm step off and the fractures must be reducible. Closed reduction and percutaneous pinning is indicated when there is about 2 to 3 mm of displacement at the trapeziometacarpal joint and this method of pinning is done using K wires. Open reduction and internal fixation is indicated in Bennett fracture dislocation when there is more than 3 mm of displacement at the carpometacarpal joint or delayed presentation that is more than one week or when the fracture is irreducible. The fixation can be done with screws or K wires. Let us see the technique of non-operative management in detail. The advantage of closed reduction and splinting is that this fracture possesses considerable potential stability when reduced correctly. If the carpometacarpal joint is held in extension, thus tightening the palmar ligaments which are so important, the reduction will be stable and dorsal redisplacement is unlikely to occur. This has been explained by John Chandley, who compared the joint to a crank standing at top dead center. This leaves the bone in a state of uncertain equilibrium, which can slip either way. If there is no traction applied, the muscle tones can induce complete dislocation if the joint is allowed to flex. But when the joint is in extension, the same muscle tone increases the stability of reduction by thrusting the bone deeper into the socket. The reduction of the Bennett fracture can be achieved by performing three maneuvers. Longitudinal traction, pronation of the metacarpal and pressure at the thumb metacarpal base. Let us see how this is done. Longitudinal traction, pronation of the metacarpal and pressure at the thumb metacarpal base. Once the fracture has been reduced, the reduction needs to be maintained by exerting pressure from the dorsal aspect onto the first metacarpal base and from the palmar aspect over the first metacarpal head to negate the actions of the abductor pollicis longus and the adductor pollicis. When doing this maneuver, we should avoid pressing onto the base of the proximal phalanx instead of the head of the first metacarpal. This will result in redisplacement of the fracture and hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. So, to maintain reduction, we need to apply a force from the dorsum onto the base of the first metacarpal and a force from the volar side on the head of the first metacarpal. If the force is applied on the base of the proximal phalanx, it will lead to redisplacement and hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joint. Then the cast or slab is applied with the wrist slightly extended and thumb immobilized in slight abduction. When applying the cast or slab, it is important to note that we must allow free movements of the metacarpophalangeal joints of the fingers and the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. The technique of closed reduction and percutaneous pinning is also simple. It is the treatment of choice for most Bennett fractures. The principle here is the bone to bone reduction is not absolutely necessary in all the cases of Bennett fracture. The surgery is performed under regional anesthesia or general anesthesia. K wires are used for percutaneous pinning. 
If the fragment is more than 20 percent of the articular surface, fracture fixation can be achieved by K wires. Usually 1.6 mm K wire is used to get a good alignment of the fracture reduction. After achieving bone to bone contact, another K wire must be used to fix the carpometacarpal joint. However, if the fragment is less than 20 percent of the articular surface, there are four different techniques using K wires for fixation. In the Wiggins Bundance technique of metacarpo trapezial pinning, a single pin goes from the distal portion of the first metacarpal, transfixes the trapezio metacarpal joint and ends in the trapezium. The Wagner technique consists of intermetacarpal simple pinning to avoid crossing the trapezio metacarpal joint. The Isalin technique consists of intermetacarpal double pinning to improve the stability. A proximal pin goes from the first to the second metacarpal without perforating the medial cortex of the second metacarpal and a second pin is passed oblique to the first it comes from the second to the first metacarpal without perforating the lateral cortex of the first metacarpal. The ADI technique is a double intermetacarpal block to pinning. A proximal pin is passed from the first to second metacarpal without perforating the medial cortex of the second metacarpal. A second pin is passed oblique to the first. It goes from the first to the second metacarpal without perforating the medial cortex of the second metacarpal again. To provide additional stability, the two protruding wires are joined by an external connector. We have already seen the indications for open reduction and internal fixation in Bennett fracture. The surgery is performed under regional anesthesia or general anesthesia. To access the fracture, a longitudinal incision is made over the subcutaneous border of the thumb that is between the insertion of the abductor pollicis longus and the thinar muscles. After the skin incision, the dorsal sensory branches of the radial nerve should be identified and protected. The extensor pollicis brevis and abductor pollicis longus tendons are identified and retracted. The radial artery if encountered is protected and retracted ulnarwards. Now by applying traction on the thumb metacarpal, the fracture can be visualized and reduced. After reduction, this fracture needs to be fixed. This can be done by using 0 0.028 inch K wires. But if K wires are used, we need additional immobilization postoperatively. If the fragment is large. 2 mm or 2.7 mm cortical lag screw can be used. In fact, even a combination of screw and K wire can be used. For instance, if the palmar marginal fragment comprises less than one third of the articular surface, one screw and a K wire can be used for fixation of the fracture. If the fragment comprises more than one third of the articular surface, two screws can be used. These x-rays show examples of using K wires for open reduction and internal fixation. The results of non-operative management have been analyzed by many workers. Canon et al. who did a 10 years evaluation after non-operative management found little evidence of symptomatic arthritis despite imperfect reduction. But Kiar Peterson found a higher incidence of symptomatic arthritis when articular incongruity persisted. But Livesley, after studying 17 patients with a 26 year follow up, found diminished mobility, strength, and evidence of degenerative arthritis in a majority of the patients. So, his conclusion was that this fracture should not be managed conservatively. Thimenga et al. had 11 years follow up after percutaneous or open reduction. Though most of their patients had some degenerative changes radiographically, they did not have symptoms. So they recommended percutaneous reduction for fracture dislocations with a large beak fragment and open reduction and screw fixation or K wires fixation for irreducible fractures. The post management regimen is quite simple. 
If a cast or splint has been applied, it is retained for 6 weeks. After removal, active movements of the thumb are started with protective thumb spica splint at night for a further 2 weeks. If pins have been used for fixation, a cast is applied for 4 weeks and then the trans-articular pin alone is removed. The pins holding the fracture fragment are removed at 6 weeks and then therapy is started. If screw fixation has been done, active range of motion can be initiated at 5 to 10 days post-operatively itself. Complications are known to occur after Bennett fractures. Long-standing instability with painful arthritis is the commonest complication. Non-union is not so common. Contracture of the first web can develop if thumb metacarpal has been immobilized in an adducted position. We have seen quite a few methods of management of Bennett fracture. Let us see if we can arrive at a treatment algorithm. The important point for deciding the treatment protocol is the step off or the subluxation. It could be 1 mm, 2 to 3 mm or more than 3 mm. The next important criteria deciding on the treatment is going to be the fragment size whether it is less than 20% of the articular surface or more than 20% of the articular surface. If the step off is very little, that is, there is almost no subluxation, irrespective of the fragment size, a cast or splint can be applied. If there is a subluxation of 2 to 3 millimeters and the fragment size is less than 20% of the articular surface, Closed reduction percutaneous fixation of the carpometacarpal joint can be done by the techniques that we have already elucidated. But if the fragment size is larger than 20% of the articular surface, closed reduction and percutaneous fixation of the fracture itself can be done. If there is a subluxation of more than 3 mm, open reduction and internal fixation needs to be done. If the fragment size is less than 20%, a K-wire fixation can be done and if the fragment size is more than 20%, a screw fixation would be ideal. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please click on the shown links to see more about metacarpal fracture management and phalangeal fractures management. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery.